What went wrong? The Fairchild Dornier 728 was a passenger jet designed by the German-American company Fairchild Dornier. The program was intended to carry 50 to 100 passengers across three variants, the 528, the 728, and the 928, and compete with the likes of the Bombardier CRJ series as well as the Embraer E-Jet family. The plane was scheduled to take its first flight in 2002 and enter service in 2003. The aircraft had amassed 125 firm orders and options for an additional 164 from notable airlines including Lufthansa and Czech Airlines. So what happened? Dornier was founded in 1914 in Friedrichshafen, Germany. The company has a vast history over the past decade, producing both commercial and military aircraft, but were never able to achieve great success in commercial aerospace. They did have some notable efforts at creating aircraft such as the Dornier DOX and the Dornier 328, yet they had never attempted at making a turbojet aircraft. After financial troubles in the early 90s, they were acquired by the American aerospace firm Fairchild Aircraft in 1996, and thus Fairchild Dornier was born. Fairchild is most well known for manufacturing the A-10, a close air support aircraft which is operated by the United States Air Force today. The first aircraft that they made was the Fairchild Dornier 328 jet, a turbojet version of the already existing 328 aircraft. It was moderately successful with around 110 orders and is still flown today across the world. With the modest success of the 328 jet, Fairchild Dornier turned its attention to the regional jet market. This was an ambitious move for the newly founded company, but there was a major hole in the regional jet market. At the time, the Bombardier CRJ series was the only major regional airliner, and Fairchild Dornier saw the opportunity to become a major producer in the regional jet market, and thus the 728 program was started. The 728 aircraft was announced to the public in October 1997. It was designed to be a conventional airliner that carried around 70 to 80 passengers, with the 528 intended to carry 20 less and the 928 intended to carry 20 more. The aircraft had a range of around 2,550 to 3,300 kilometers. It also planned on using the General Electric CF-34 engines that were used on the Bombardier CRJ series. It featured a 2-3 configuration, similar to what is seen on the A220 series today. The wide 2-3 configuration, as well as the relatively conventional design, intrigued airlines and the program quickly started to gain orders, most notably an order for 60 aircraft from Lufthansa with an option for 60 additional aircraft. However, this early promise did not last. At the Paris Air Show in 1999, the Embraer E-Jet series was unveiled to the public. This proved fatal to the Fairchild Dornier 728. Both planes were aimed at the 50 to 110 passenger regional jet market, with the Embraer E-Jet series offering better efficiency and a more common 2-2 configuration. Embraer was also an established manufacturer with great success in the 50-seater jet market with the Embraer ERJ-145 series which had great success with regional carriers across the globe. Whereas the 728 program was Fairchild Dornier's first serious attempt at creating a passenger aircraft in this market. Lufthansa had also pressured Fairchild Dornier to decrease the diameter of the fuselage in order to prevent low-cost carriers from implementing a 3-3 configuration instead of Lufthansa's preferred 2-3 configuration. This design choice scared many potential low-cost carriers away and caused some carriers to even cancel their orders such as Corsair. While the Embraer Egypt family was amassing orders, the Fairchild Dornier stagnated and wasn't gaining any traction among airlines. By the 21st of March 2002, the first prototype had rolled out the doors and was presented to the public, but by then it was too late. Debt had skyrocketed and the program did not have enough orders to break even. Before the intended first flight in the summer of 2002, Fairchild Dornier declared bankruptcy and the Fairchild Dornier program came to an end. There was a glimmer of hope when the Chinese investment firm De Long International Strategic Investment Group took a stake in the program. Further structural tests of the plane were carried out, but the program eventually came to a final halt when the investment firm backed out in early 2004. 
Only three aircraft were ever built and none of them ever flew.